Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey everybody, welcome into the podcast. It's Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with Phil Putney and myself talking investing, finance, and retirement and being risk averse is the topic this week on the podcast, explaining this buzzword of risk averse, what it means. What's going on, partner? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Enjoying the fall. Yeah. You're hopefully hopefully very... things dry out a little bit, but yeah. Oh, you guys been getting a lot of rain. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 You're looking very nice. You're looking very, uh, got a new, got a new camera in there. Yeah. The, yeah. The new camera does miracles. So it's yeah, uh, amazing yeah. what you can do with that. <laughs> A little new Sony action. This this episode is sponsored by Sony. I'm on a Sony. He's on a Sony. Not really. That, that's right. <laughs> but it's Sony. If you want to sponsor it, that'd be totally that's. Fun. Hey, I'd be happy with that. That'd be great. You know, send me some more equipment. And... Yeah, that's right. It's just equipment. That's right. You know, we won't talk about your stock at all. Uh, <laughs> that's right. We'll get into that. that that's yeah. Yeah, we will. Not we, a recommendation. That's right. We don't do that at all. We talk. We talk generalities. Is That's right. Very, very, very general uh, terms. Exactly. You so got to talk gotta, to your advisor for the specifics. For the specifics. That's right. And, and of course, if Phil's your advisor, then you can talk to him. Then we can talk. Specifics. That's right. We can talk but specifics. Off, right. Offline, not on the podcast. So uh, I got to bring this up. I just saw this uh, at the time we're taping this. It looks like they just passed it or they just signed it into bill. Uh, California is banning uh, lawnmowers, basically. Not lawnmowers, but small combustible, combustible small engines yeah small engines uh have banned it i guess the governor signed the thing effective 2024 uh so no more selling gasoline powered leaf blowers uh chainsaws lawnmowers so on and so forth i mean i don't know man this this seems I, I, like I can't i can't imagine that that is going to do much for the pollution i mean it how many of those do they have out there? <laughs> well, and so you know, I guess, as of now, it looks like they're not banning the use. So, because we were, you and I were talking about what about yeah. the number of landscapers that work? Like, what does this do to landscapers, right? So, I guess they can continue to use them, uh, but who knows? That they just can't buy the new. They can't buy. But I mean, but what commercial happens? use? I mean, they buy those things every two to three years because they what tear them up. Breaks <laughs> right, exactly. So. You know, and and I bring that up, Phil, because one of the things I want to talk about too is the uh, you know this six hundred dollar IRS reporting the bank thing. So yeah. they're also trying to get it pushed through where they want the administration wants the banks, your bank, to report if you spend six hundred dollars yeah. or more on something. Well, if you got to buy a new electric lawnmower, probably going to be six hundred dollars. A little more. bit more than six hundred bucks, I would imagine. Yeah. It just, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, it, it, we're losing our mind. It's crazy. Uh, you know, I, and, and what's big, the big, what, big brother? What do they really need to know that for? I, I was going to say, it, what it are the implications of this, Phil? Are they, yeah. are they after under the table money? Like is, are they after cash transactions? Is that, is that the deal? Well, it doesn't, that doesn't hit the bank anyways. I mean, they're not going to, the, Iris has always done what's called economic audits, which is basically you know, if you're claiming all these deductions on a return, but you're showing very little income to not be able to support it, I mean, they can come right. in and do an economic audit to figure out, okay, how is this happening? I mean, I, right, right. being a CPA, I mean, I've worked with small business owners and, and had a few, you know, around through the years that have been cash businesses and, you know, they've got a big house, they're paying 24000 a year in property taxes and all this, and their business is showing 30000 in profit in a year. And I'm like, okay, we've got to have a talk because this <laughs> this doesn't work. Your, right, your mortgage yeah. payment and all that, I mean, it's more than what you're telling the IRS you're making. You're losing money on the tax return. It's, I know you love it, but it doesn't work long term. But if I if I go down and pull out $600 to in cash, right, and then I pay my landscaper, and he deposits six hundred dollars in cash. I mean, that's kind of what to me. It seems like normally that would be a not. You know, they're not. He's not showing that income, right? Because it was just cash. Right. So it seems to me that that's part of what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to figure out how they can. Yeah, know, who knows what they're doing with the information? I, I mean, the the reportable transaction is at ten right now. You know, so any yeah. transaction through your bank that's greater than ten gets reported. Right. You know, that, the whole yeah, ten grand. The whole concept of that is money laundering. You know, they were sure. trying to cut and down that on makes, that money laundering, which makes absolutely makes sense. sense. I get it. Yeah. You know, but 600 bucks. I mean, that's, you that's know, a that's a crazy number. Like it, it just seems, and I guess part of the, uh, fixing my headphones here, I guess part of the, 
uh, bill proposal that they're fighting over right now about this whole infrastructure tax, you know, proposal thing. Mm -hmm. 88 billion, I believe. I'm just, you know, rounding off here just based on what I cursory read, but uh, to beef up the IRS, basically. 88 billion. Which, yeah, I can't. That's the thing I was thinking as they're going through this. Okay, that's great. You've got all this data, but what do you do with it? I mean, it, they're already behind. Yeah, they can't even process tax returns. I mean, they're so right. far behind in getting tax refunds out. And with all the changes and everything that's happened this year, it's just been ridiculous, which, yeah, they need more staff to do that alone. But right. now if they've got all this data, what you know, what do you do with and, it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. How are you going to process it? What are you going to do with it? Yeah. And do you really want the IRS having that information from your bank account? I mean, it's well, I've heard that the uh, I've know? heard that the bank lobbyists are are hitting pretty hard. So the, the it looks this hopefully this will be a no go. Uh, yeah, but we'll certainly see how that plays out. But what does that have to do with risk? I guess it's probably on the you know the topic of conversation. Well, to me, it's it's a lot of risk, right? I mean, we're just we're we're taking more risks. Out, out, and adding more places for people to be worried about risk. So, yeah. Bill, what is what is being risk averse? So, people are afraid of a lot of stuff now. They come in mm -hmm. to see you for the first time, or they come in to see any you know financial professional, and they go, "Hey, man, I'm risk averse." What what does that mean? Well, in general terms, when people talk about risk aversion, it's it's generally relating to the market. You know, right. they think, "Hey, I'm I'm very risk averse." You know, I don't want to take a lot of risk. Meaning, okay. from an investment standpoint, I want to make sure that. You know, I'm not taking too much risk and in, in having that volatility in a market. My exposure you know, but, is not too right. Yeah. Exposure to the stock market, you know. But I mean, it's risk is a very funny thing because I mean that's one aspect of risk. But there's many risks that you're going to face when you get into retirement. Oh, yeah. You know, so if if you want to truly be quote unquote risk averse, you've got to look at the broad spectrum of what is risk. Where are the yeah. risks in retirement? And market market risk is one of them for sure. Don't right. you know? Don't misunderstand that. But there's ways to handle that. Um, right. Another huge risk that often gets overlooked, and I think most of us have kind of lost sight of until this year, is inflation. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? The last ten years, you know, it's it's been it's pretty non-existent. I mean, it's you know one and a half, two percent. I mean, that's cruising along. You, you don't hardly notice it. Yeah. The gas goes up a little in the summer in Michigan with travel. It always happens and drops back, you know, but yeah. man, yeah. we're back up to, you know, almost four bucks a gallon. And it's just crazy stuff again. It's, you Did know, you see so. the, uh, there was a news story uh, or, well, you can't tell anymore what's a news story and what's an ad, but uh, yeah. there was a story that a gas station had put up a uh, dollar 75 or whatever. Uh, yeah gas prices and then on their marquee they put just kidding this was our prices one year ago uh today they were doing like and people were like flocking in and then of course they got all upset read the were, fine print right <laughs> false advertising and you know and it was like you know okay so you had some people taking it too far and other people realizing they were just making a statement saying hey you know gas it was i think it was actually like 315 is what they were charging now yeah something like that but it was the sign was like a dollar 75 and so, of course, they had lines, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, yep. so, yeah. At that price, everyone wants it, right? Yeah, so. exactly. So, I mean, it's definitely happened. And that was just a year ago to highlight your point about inflation. Right. You know, yeah. So. so, I mean, that's that's just one of the risks, you know. So, inflation, how do you handle that? Um, yeah. Which, again, most people, Don't drive. I think, have kind of lost sight of. Yeah. I mean, that's, gas is only a piece of it. I mean, look at, I mean, if you've gone out to eat, it, it's unbelievable what that's, how much I, it's gone up, I 20, know. 30% or more. Yeah. Big time. My wife's out of town in Wyoming right now dealing with some family issues. And I went to um, a little Japanese restaurant last night. I hadn't gone out to eat for four or five days. I was like, you know, I'm going to go pick me up a little takeout food. I went and picked it up last night. It was $15 for just me, you know? Yeah. And it used to be the two of us would go get a, a meal there. And it was like, I don't know, probably 20, 22, something like that. But it was 15 for just me. So if it had been both of us, it had been 30 something bucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, for takeout. it's crazy. It's crazy. And food, I mean, the same thing, you know, just even in the grocery stores, you've seen it. So yeah, inflation is okay. a huge risk, but, but yeah, kind of going back to that whole concept of market risk. Right. I mean, it's, it, it's funny. I've had several, you know, clients will come in and, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm risk averse. And, you know, but I, so I, I invest only in large companies, large company stocks, you know, like S&P 500. I just want the big companies. I'm like, okay, okay. okay. so let's talk about risk. And, you know, yeah, there, you might have a lower risk. Sure. I mean, if you look at one single company, you know, versus the S&P, sure, the S&P is going to be less risky than that one company because right. of the, right. 
you know, the pool and the balance of the, the companies within it, right. but there's still a lot of risk, you know, or well, I only invest in dividend paying stocks because well, at least I've got the dividend and, and historically they don't lose as much money, mm-hmm. which there's definite truth to that, you know, right. but right. number one, dividends aren't guaranteed, you know, and, and we've lived through some of that. There's several companies just recently with the pandemic that cut dividends and they've not brought oh, them yeah. back, oh, yeah. you know, well, and you know, even though, yeah, they do drop less, they still are very volatile. It's a stock. Yeah. Stocks are volatile. So, well, I was going to ask you, so somebody comes in and they say, and you kind of, you kind of alluded to this, but they come in and they say first time meeting, whatever. And they mm-hmm. say, yeah, I'm definitely risk averse. You know, I, I don't like risk. So my portfolio, you know, is, is reflecting of that. I want you to kind of, you know, do your thing. And yep. you go looking through it and you're like, yeah, no, you're not risk averse, right? Often that's the Absolutely. Case. Yeah, I mean, and that's a discussion we have. It, it's and that's my job as an advisor. Part of it is is sure. finding that and, and bringing it to light, you know. And I always tell them, look, I mean, it's your portfolio. It's not mine. Here's here's my recommendation. Here's my concern with it. Right, you're you know, way more it, risk than you realized. Yeah, you know, or you know, I've worked for X Y Z company for thirty years. I I trust them, you know. So I've got everything with them. I you know I. Well, okay, I get it, but there's a lot of things that can happen to that company or that industry that are beyond your control for sure. And even beyond that company's control. Yeah. So even though you're comfortable and confident because you worked there for 30 years and I I get that the loyalty is awesome, but don't, don't risk your retirement based on, you know, what you're thinking is less risk, you know, going in that direction. So yeah, there's a lot, even market-based, there's a lot of avenues of risk and understanding really how it plays out. You've got to understand that you have to take some risk in a portfolio in retirement you know, because of the inflation side. So, I mean, it's, it's a balance you have to understand. So do we, do we wind up being in these riskier positions because we just don't know any better? It's just because kind of what we're conditioned with some things like, because often again, to your, to this point that people will come in and they have way more at risk than they realize. Mm-hmm. And so if that's the case, is it just a lack of general education around you know, investing or in market or whatever, because more times than not, I mean, I talk to advisors all across the country and like eight out of every 10 people that walk in the door are way more at risk than they feel comfortable with. They just, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's education, you know, I mean, most of the clients we work with, um, the majority of their money's in a 401k, excuse me. And they probably set that allocation 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Or, or target know, date fund, right? You know, or they're in a target date fund and they're thinking, oh, okay, that's, you know, perfect because it's going to become less risky, you know, over time, which it does. But, but not, you've as gotta, much, not as much people think though. Not even close. I mean, if you look at a target date fund that is dated today, 2020 or 2021 target date fund. Zero in <clears> well, that's what most people think is, oh, okay, I'm retired. It's, it's risk yeah, off. Oh, no, no, no. You're at a 60, 40 allocation. You got 60% yeah. in stock, 40% in bonds. Maybe 50, 50, maybe. Yeah, maybe 50, 50. But I mean, it's it's way more risk than most people understand. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I think a lot of it is either just lack of knowledge or misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, so that's, that's part of the education process is first walking a client through the understanding of what is risk, having them take that risk profile so we understand what are they comfortable with. Then looking back at, okay, here's your current allocation, you know, and, and very often there, there's way more risk in that allocation they're currently invested in than, than they realized, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. which again, the last 10, 12 years, it's been great, you know, they're, they're, but unfortunately they're, you're getting used to this uptrend in a market that is not sustainable. I mean, it, it markets don't do that long-term, so all right. So how do we fix it, Phil? So we come in to see, uh, mm-hmm. or we come in to see any advisor, how do they go through figuring this out? We, we do a risk analysis. We kind of yep. uh, break it all down. How do you, how do you find out their risk tolerance? Uh, you know, I know some places do like the score, you know, almost like a yep. sleep number bed for folks, if they want to think about it that way, you know, so if you're um, on a scale of a hundred, if you're a 20, that means you're, you want to be at low risk, right? but your portfolio might be at 70. So you got to pare it down. Yep. Yeah. And that's, I mean, where we start is we've got a risk profile questionnaire that we run through like most advisors Our similar concept. Ours is on a scale of one to 10 is what it comes down to. So it's, you know, but same concept, right? I mean, a a 10 is like, 
high risk. You're down at the you know crap stable in, in the casino, basically. You know, <laughs> you're, the, the, you're, you're you're a Lions fan and you're putting it all on the Lions. To win. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Or Bitcoin guys. all the way. That kind of well, I, I think Bitcoin is probably a twelve or thirteen, but yeah, on a maybe. scale of one to ten. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, it's you know um, understanding what risk is. What what is the comfort level? Because the the challenge with risk from a comfort level standpoint is it does no good for somebody to go in, you know, thinking, oh, I want the return. I'm comfortable there. And, you know, but the the downside when that happens and they bail out, <clears throat> which is going to happen yeah. to, to take risk and get the higher return, you're going to have yeah. downside. Yep. And the worst thing you can do is in the middle of that now say, okay, I'm done. I'm out. I'm just too much risk. Well, that, well, that's, that's the wrong right? time to realize yeah, because, that it's yeah. too much risk because, because now you, you've you lost and locked in that loss and you're not going to come back from it. So. Yeah, if you're rolling the, if you want to roll the dice, so to speak on that, you know, with the market being the way that it's been for the last 11, mm -hmm. 12, 12 years, you know, right, it's, it's, yeah. it's, that it's, you know, you got to be willing to kind of have yourself out there. And that's what we see happen often when we have, you know, big pullbacks or whatever, yep. even if it's a short lived one, like the pandemic one, mm -hmm. you know, technically it was only what about 60 days or so uh, as far as the market was concerned. So right. people jumping out because they, they don't truly, they didn't truly have the risk tolerance. They, mm -hmm. they thought they could take the chance, but they right. couldn't. They couldn't stop. And I mean, as, as things change in life, retirement happens. I mean, you sure. realize that I'm no longer contributing. I, you know, I don't have that timeline, so to speak, but the flip side of that risk is then understanding well, I, I can't just take it all and put it in the bank either because now I'm not going to keep up with inflation. And that's what people seem to, you know? think, seem to think, Phil. They seem to yep. think often oh, gotta, it's two things. It's it's the yep. market and cash, and that's it. That's like the yep. only two things that exist in many people's minds, and that's just not the case. Yeah, I mean, and, and the, the risk there is that going broke safely, you know, is kind of the concept that you, you right. hear often. Of, yeah, you're going broke safely because the the bank balance doesn't go down, you know, from a numerical standpoint, but what it right. can buy goes down every year. Yep. Exactly. You know, so it, it, it has to be this, this understanding of risk tolerance, what your comfortable risk, and then what your plan requires, you know, what based on your spending and, and mm -hmm. the inflation that you've projected in a plan, how much risk do you need to take? And then a balance between those. And, and, and then a matter of positioning assets to make it happen. So yeah. And if you're losing money safely in the bank, you know, when you have to buy a new lawnmower in two years, it's, gonna, you know, it's not going to buy you the same amount of lawnmower that it bought you before. That's but, right. You better buy it now because, you know, yeah. who knows what you it's going to be in two years from today. Uh, that has GPS in it that, you know, I thought it was bad enough. Uh, you know, I saw a couple of years ago that lawnmowers started having, you know, these, this stuff in it, like you have a new lawnmower. It'll text you when it's time to change its oil. Or it'll text you when it's, you know, you forgot, you know, you put the schedule in, it's time to mow the grass, you know? Yeah. I thought, yeah. We're, just getting, I thought we're just getting a little crazy with, with some of this technology and the Bluetooth thing and so on and so forth. You know, it's like, do you really need Bluetooth, your speakers or your, your phone to your mower? And, you know, <laughs> you know, you know now you got these, now they got these electrical ones with the GPS in them. So they'll auto cut the guard. You know, yeah. Guard yeah. And, I don't know. It might work for a small yard, but I mean, you know, what, uh, what if weird, the though. what if the dog left their you know their treat out there their their stick out there or whatever is it does it know that is it going to go around it or yeah you know, you know, I don't know is it going to stop and pick it up for you or? there's something to be said for for manual activity right it's good for yeah. us, good for us mentally well mentally and physically right we yeah, well, we start yeah. to lose that so yeah, exactly so there you go so that's our risk conversation this week being risk averse. You know, as we age, we're, we're much more cautious about all kinds of risk. We watch where I was walking my mom the other day around the yard uh, with yep. the dogs and taking her for a stroll. And she's very cautious of where she puts her feet. She's 80. Right. So, absolutely. You know, and, you know, so we're all more risk conscious about a lot of things. So nothing wrong with being risk averse, but understanding how it relates to your plan. And are you truly set up with a portfolio that is taking that into account because you, right. you don't want to have the risk. So Under, yeah. understand everything, all the different risks, work with an advisor to put that plan together. Like we've talked about before, it's all about having and, the plan. And if you don't want to understand it at all, yep. why you have an advisor, understand the basics, have a decent grasp on it so that when you talk with your advisor, you can share the things that you're feeling or the share the things that you're uh, wanting to accomplish or afraid of or whatever the case is. So they can, you know, craft you the kind of portfolio, the kind of plan, the kind of strategy 
all of that that helps you be comfortable with your risk level. So that's our podcast this week on risk aversion. If you got any questions, reach out to Phil. The number's on the screen, 248-888-7530. Is that right? I hadn't looked. I've got to wing it. You got it. Uh, and I did get it. 248-888-7530. Or just go to philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com. Phil and I will see you next time here on the podcast. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll catch you a little bit later here on the show. Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.